Being a refugee has made me gain a lot of experience and has made me to understand that we have great things coming ahead. I am from DRC, in South Sudan. I come from Burundi. Zimbabwe is home to the word refugee, we all make our own assumptions. We don't take the time to listen to their stories or step into their shoes. Refugees have a history, they have aspirations, they have dreams, and they also have fears. But how does a refugee adapt in an unknown land? Just like you and me, the goal is freedom, peace, happiness and success. Today on the Game Changer documentary, we step into the refugees world and understand a little bit more about where they're coming from and where they're going. Join me. Uh, my name is Agnes Wogutete. I came from Burundi. Currently staying in Togo Gara refugee camp. We reached in Togo Gara refugee camp in 2004, uh, whereby I started my primary in 2005 in grade two, then completed my primary in, tw in 2010. Then I proceeded to secondary. My secondary I did it in boarding school and uh, TDH and UNSCR scholarship. I completed my secondary school in 2016. That's when I proceeded to university, Africa University, as well under Africa University Scholarship Program. I left Burundi because of insecurity and lack of peace in the country, because of war. That's when, that's when our parents, my parents, decided to live in the country. I was very, very young, so I'm not much aware of many things. But what I know is that there was insecurity and war, then lack of peace in the country. That's what forced us to leave the country. So, Agnes came from Burundi yeah. and you were very young um, but growing up what did you always aspire to be as a young person? As a young person uh, I always dream of fin completing my school my mm -hmm. education then have a good job okay so that I can help those who assisted me in the process of my education mm. my parents uh, my fellow refugees, mm. uh, TDH, I have to acknowledge yes, them, yes, UNSC, yes. Yara government, yes. my community. Okay. Yeah. What, so, what sort of job did you want in, in terms of, you know, your profession? Uh, I'm enviro environmentalist, oh, so nice. I love environment. That's amazing. So I can even working with Emma, yes. doing different activities in my society. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. solid waste management, yes. uh, water and uh, high, water sanitation and hygiene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what have some have been some of the barriers for you as a young refugee? I mean, 
do you receive the same opportunities? Have you been able to get, I mean, you've now graduated. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges in order for you to access a job? Uh, the challenges that I have, it's on my document. For example, temporary permit. Mm -hmm. It is states that the beholder of this document must not be involved in employment, politicians, so I can't be employed yeah. according to that document. Mm. So it's a barrier. It's a very big challenge to us as refugees, as young adults in refugee camp. We finish our education and we end from there. Our future is, is in dark. Mm. So what are you doing right now? For now, I'm working as an interpreter. I think my office is UNSCR4. They, uh, they employed me as, as an interpreter. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And how many languages can you speak? Because you obviously have to speak a few languages uh, yeah. in order for you to be an interpreter. I can speak five languages, which includes English, Swahili, Kenya Rwanda, Kirundi, and Shona. Thank you so much, Agnes, and I wish you all the best as you endeavor in your future and, you know, whatever hopes and aspirations you have. Lastly, what fears do you have for the future? I know you just told me that there's this big barrier that makes it almost impossible for you to, to have any sort of employment. What are your fears? Uh, my fears is that as a a child who grew up in a condition of being a refugee. I wish, I fear that maybe I will end up in this situation. My prayer is that maybe I reach to a country whereby I'm at, I, I might be accepted as a citizen of that country. Mm, thanks so much, Agnes. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Patrick Saidi Irenge and I am from DRC, but I fled from DRC due to the political instability and insecurity which uh, occurred toward my parents and I was forced to come and seek for asylum seeker in Zimbabwe. And today I'm gradually happy because I can share a bit of my story with a lot of people around the world. As you can see, I have spent my primary school in Zimbabwe and now I have done my secondary school and high school and finished and uh, uh, my academic excellence was quite good, which I appreciate because there are a lot of people who assisted me into this activity or in the field that I excelled into. It's quite good to understand because as a young man with an aspiration and goals in life and vision, I find it hard or difficult to achieve my uh, goals because of the past uh, experience that I had passed. But then I needed to understand the future behind or the future coming ahead of me, that I cannot let go of my dreams because I am a refugee or because I have severely get wounded into the heart and my psychology has been disturbed. So I understood that sometimes in life, we need to know the life purpose that we have. When you have discovered yourself, you know your goals, you know your ambitions, you know your vision, then you plan your own schedule. In life, you can succeed. So coming to that standard of uh, finalizing the career or the vision that I think of getting a life, I had to pass through a lot whereby I had to go for primary and had to focus hard. I had to push myself into books and people around me, which showed that the community, you cannot excel or do something great without anybody. You need someone to assist you in order to achieve something, which showing that in our society, we are dependent. And I'm happy to say that I gradually thank the uh, education officer who assisted us in every sphere 
we were affected during our high school with a pandemic, which is a global pandemic, COVID-19. And there were challenges of having in-person lessons at school. But then there were provisions which assisted us to uh, gain opportunity holding our online lessons. And that was very functional to us. And it's also increased the moral because if you see that there are some people outside there willingly to share a bit or the small amount that they have with you, it's something great. And being a refugee has made me gain a lot of experience and has made me to understand that we have great things coming ahead and we cannot hold back those dreams just because I claim that today I am a refugee, my status can make me low or make me be looked or underestimated amongst the Mideast. We are people with visions and we are people who want to do something in the world. I have been inspired with a lot of books, uh, African literature, people such as Chinua Achebe, such as Chima Amanda Ngozi. These people have written a lot of things which inspire us and we cannot hold back because the Africa that we want and the global the community that we want is a community whereby we are creating a utopia, harmony, living in a society where there is freedom of space, there is no name calling, a society with all kinds of issues. And this is such like an advice to anyone to know that if you admit that you can, you will, because you are the one with the dreams. My fears as a youth, I fear the modern world because everything is now digital. And if everything is digital as a youth, what are the things? We are going to face a lot of challenges because we see that learning, it, everything we need to do on e-learning, expenses, job opportunities, the way the world is going or revolving is bringing a lot of things to the people, is bringing a lot of questions into the minds of the youth because we find it hard to see that you need to focus into a degree but you don't have that opportunity, you need to do the distance learning. How can you do a distance learning when you don't have even a, a laptop, when you don't have even a smartphone as a possession? So everything is now globalized to an extent that I see that some youths are going to be left vulnerable and opportunities are going to decrease to an extent. But for the future, we cannot say that we should now be left behind, but we need to adapt we need to dance according to the tune. And how are we going to dance according to the tune? As a youth, we need to focus in creating our own plans, preliminary plans for the future. What am I really going to achieve in the future? What am I really needing to do? Which field am I professional into? whereby even the world is modernized only online, Every, everything is an activity on, online, but my activity can assist. We see that a lot of people can engage into sport activities. The way things are going, we can share our talents out. And sharing that talent is showing that we as you to having bright future in order to shine and we need to shine. There is a serious misconception as to what a refugee camp looks like. It's my first time in a refugee camp and I am so excited. As you can see, there is so much activity. We're just coming from a barber shop and we have retail shops that are all around us. Refugees are trying to replicate what life was like back at home. And with the help of the government, organizations such as UNHCR, Tere des Homes Italia Zimbabwe, they've been making a difference. And now they can try to live a normal life, just like what they used to do back at home. 
it will never be the same but hey look at this i think it's absolutely incredible Hello, my name is uh, Tzala Eli. I come from DRC. I am uh, 21 years old. Well, I left the DRC because of insecurity. Probably the, way, uh, the place we were living in, we were attacked by um, a rebel group known as the Mai Mai. So we felt so insecure that uh, we left the DRC to, for Zimbabwe. Then we came here in Zimbabwe, it was 2010, and um, we got uh, accepted by the Zimbabwean government as refugees. We were offered the legal refugee status. So from here, I've been um, studying since my grade five here at Tonga Primary School. And I've also did my high school here in Zimbabwe. And um, currently I'm holding the position as the youth president here in the camp. We are in charge of organizing activities such as youth meetings, facilitating youth development. And currently for this year, our main aim is promoting youth participation. So we are working on how we can promote the youth uh, in terms of participation, make them feel free, learn new uh, cultures, traditions, and uh, learn everything that they can from their immediate environment. Okay, um, right now I'm a, a university here in Rhodes student and I'm working with the University of Southern Indiana. There I'm studying um, aerospace engineering, I'm double majoring, and uh, political science, which is uh, a degree specially designed for people who want to understand um, the reasons why people fight, because I believe um, our my country as an individual country is really in need of leadership. So I'm doing that and uh, currently here in the camp being on the ground, I'm the youth president. And I, my, my greatest fears are in relation to uh, change because I envision a world with change. I, env I envision a world where um, everyone is given uh, in an equal chance to uh, have a political opinion. Maybe someone is not discriminated by the gender, be it race or whatsoever ethnicity. And uh, I fear that uh, the issue might not be addressed well in time to save more lives. And I fear that maybe a lot of people will still be victims of uh, that, save, that very same one cause. Hello, uh, my name is Gawar Nair. I'm a 25 years old uh, from South Sudan. I fled my country in 2018, early 2018, uh, when a group of Hamid men uh, attacks our village, our village. And then uh, I cross uh, all the way through so many countries to Zimbabwe. I arrived here in early 2018. I did my uh, high uh, school in, uh, in my own country. And uh, coming to Zimbabwe, uh, Things have changed a lot. Uh, I've, I've been doing some uh, vocational trainings, which indeed I have got some skills. I'm, um, I'm a member of the uh, TRC, Tongari Youth Committee. We have uh, seen a, a camp that is so sustainable. Uh, we have seen youth are being equipped with knowledge uh, especially the youth center, which um, would be used as um, a hub for technology and, cult and cultural activities. Uh, so many things. I have learned that home is home when it is safe. Uh, well, uh, so long as home is not safe, mm -hmm. uh, I don't wish to go home okay. unless home is safe. Well, uh, my hope is to uh, have a graduate degree. I really hope that uh, I have a university degree so that uh, in the future I can, comp I can compete in the global market. Uh, my fears is the fact that if it happened that I cannot uh, be in that position to uh, have a graduate degree. My fears uh, also, uh, is the fact that the world 
is in a future that is um, so worried. We are facing a looming climate change. Uh, we are facing um, uh, technology which will run human redundant out of the job market. And it would really, it really worries me if the refugees would not be matching uh, the current global trends. So this is one of the fears that I have, but with the hope and uh, the realization which I have seen in TRC, I really hope that the Tonga refugee uh, community uh, would be matching the global trend. We are Anistangongo from DRC. Mm, I lived in DRC 15 years ago. So I'm living in the camp, Tongogara camp. Yeah, and then I leave my country because of uh, the fight was there a long time ago. I just killed my parents, uh, my village just burning. So it's because I was leaving my country and I'm here and my family. The th I, th I started to build this business, the time was uh, at Harare, because I just stayed here, business was not fine, I go to Harare. I was here a salon day, and then I was selling the product for the hair. So I see the, the life is like, it was like difficult. I pay rent, and then to pay where I am stay to eat, so for myself, I see like I was, uh, I was not fine. So I said, let, let me come back to the camp. And then you can see I try to build this business. I see so many people, you have a restaurant, uh, you have uh, the shop, shop, shop for myself. I think, no, I can't make shop because it's too much shop. Let me try to make uh, the restaurant. So uh, because I make this restaurant, it was helping me. It's still helping me, but now I, can, I can't say, it don't help, but I know it's because of this corona. But one day, I know you go to help me. So you go to help also my, my family. There are myths around what a refugee camp is, what sort of people we have within a refugee camp. And I do hope that through this documentary, a lot of us will get to understand, or at least listen to their stories and step into their shoes.